started structure in Whitemore. Mm. That's where you started the um, like one order thing. Yeah, so it Shut went. Up, <clears throat> but the Omar. No, it weren't really. It weren't really like that. See, because people people are having this kind of misconception. Now you have to also understand the the backdrop of this as well. Mm. In those times as well, there was a lot of things that were going on. So um, you could you could say in the world with what they would consider to be like, you know, acts of terrorism and things that are happening in this country. So what was actually happening as well, that there were certain individuals that, you know, especially European gentlemen that were taking it upon themselves as well was to say, well, this is our country. What are you doing here? You know, beating up certain vulnerable individuals, not knowing their full case. Mm. And I'm and what my problem was as well that if you love your country so much, then what are you doing destroying your country? Then if you loved it so much, you're in prison for a reason. Mm -hmm. So what about the IRA man? Why aren't you attacking them? It didn't make any sense. So is this really is this really about what they've done, or is this really a racial thing? And it's disguised as well because they're in for terror related incidences. I'm gonna target them because then. To be fair, it's supposed to be gloves all off for everybody. And I didn't really see that, that kind of treatment. So, and the misconception as well was this. So in 2000, when it really kind of it escalated on regards to the situation between, you could say, what I would probably consider them like EDOs. It's, you know, like... Tommy Robinson. Keep, keep, you know, everything Tommy English. Tommy Robinson's boys. <laughs> I don't know whether they're his boys or whatever, but um, like EDO is the founder, isn't it? It's, I say their behavior and their mannerisms, mm -hmm. it, it resembles that type of. It happened in, it happened in 2007. And the thing was, as well, what a lot of people don't know as well, it happened with two non Muslims. So, what actually, I can tell you now. So, there was a there was a non-Muslim and he used to be around Muslims. Mm -hmm. An Afro an Afro-Caribbean gentleman. You would know him if I mentioned his name, mm. but yeah. out of respect, I can't. Yeah, you can't. He had he had a um he had inc he had an incident with um another gentleman from up north, a white guy. This guy was always seen like, you know, punching a pad. He was a boxer, supposed to be really good. Everybody knows of him. So they caught up. So they said, okay, let's have a fight. That's the way they wanted to resolve their situation. Who are we to tell them? If that's what you want to do, then by all means. So they went, um, they went into the cell and they were fighting. Now, for some reason, the guy who's the boxer is not really dominating the way that he thought he could dominate this this gentleman here. Mm -hmm. So now his friends are saying that, yeah, we're going to go in there. We're going to, but the brother that was there was saying that, no, it's fair. There's one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. Look at even the size difference. It's like David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. Like, leave it. So they were adamant. And so the brother then turned around and said that, you see, as Muslims as well, once we've honoured something, we stick to our honour. So he punched the other individual and they ended up fighting. Mm. So there's all of, there's some type of squirmish. Two fights now. Mm. Mm. So what happened was What we found out They sent a letter Across to different wings Saying to go down to the gym To get this brother mm. But little did they know as well That at the time when they decided That they wanted to do this All the brothers are doing their workouts there So about 10 of them went down there To you know to injure the brother And they ended up getting hurt mm. So now they're all Backfired. in the seg Yes Now they're all in the seg but rather than actually speak the truth as well of what happened with the situation, they went to Franklin. They got shipped out to Franklin, mm. which is their kind of like mothership. Yeah. So what they done was they spent a narrative that, yeah, this is what the Muslims are doing. So obviously they were upset as well. Fair enough, these guys. And they started to attack the Muslims. In Franklin? Yeah. And look, we, we need to speak the truth. Like a lot of people give misconceptions. They hurt them. Mm. So, you know, they, they, they hurt the brothers at the time that was there. Mm. The ones that got hurt. Scouses. So then, um... Scousers. Um, there's all a mixture. Mm. You know, there's... there's I, I, Scousers are mad racist. I support Liverpool still. But so... I was upset to hear that. 
So what they so what they basically so what they basically done they done this so um when the rest of the prisoner state heard this a lot of the brothers were putting in applications to go to Franklin. Mm. Ah, yeah. try and pattern up. So some of the brothers went there, mm. and then obviously they said who had a ring. K went there. So some of the brothers went there, and then the incident happened there. Mm. And what was kind of shocking from what I got told as well with this incident because we're going by I got told this by the primary source. Yeah. yeah that when they were fighting half the wing, the officers were only holding down those four brothers and they were being kicked constantly in their heads by mm. the prisoners that were there. Mm -hmm. So these were the kind of treatments that were happening. So now you can understand when officers are complaining, oh yeah, I just got attacked. You got attacked because now brothers are not seeing you as a civilian anymore. They're seeing you as actually a criminal because this is what you're doing. You're doing criminal things. So this is what escalated and then from what you know of, and then they tried to spin a narrative that the Muslim boy gang. Mm. So now we're going to get to my, my situation. Mm. So I'm at Muslim, I'm at Juma service. And after Juma service, a person's throat get cut. Huh? Yeah. In the mosque? Yeah. That's tough. Um, mm. Mm. So yeah, in the, his throat, his throat gets cut and they pin it on me. Mm. Mm. So what happened was initially they all they all come and brothers are blocking them at first, saying, mm. yeah, we're gonna take Patterson. But we need to understand the back the backdrop um the backdrop of this. Two weeks before this, and we all knew that something was gonna happen. Um there was a brother and he was being restrained by an officer. But I didn't like the way they were restraining him. Again, I call it another George Floyd moment. I had to, I couldn't just, I, I couldn't just not protest. Mm. I had to, I couldn't see that because you can hear the, when somebody, look, I do jujitsu. So when you're blocking somebody's airwaves as mm. well, the person's actually basically choking as well. You know that it's close and obviously mm -hmm. he's angry. I'm not saying that I saw the start of the incident. But what I'm actually saying is you've got him under control now. He's pinned to the ground. He can't do that. Just release his neck. Mm. That's all. Mm. You can put your hands there, whatever you want to do, but release, his, release his, his neck. They didn't do this. So what they said was, um, a few of them got injured. So they said it was me. Mm. So I was taken to the seg. Now, normally, especially in dispersal as well, you get shipped out straight away. So you'll stay down sick for a while. And then basically mm -hmm. they'll just, basically they'll just move you on. They didn't do this with me. After about, this what was very strange and everybody's kind of like, well, what's going on? After about a few, after about a few weeks, they put me back on the wing. Hmm. And so brothers are saying, be careful. They're looking to set you up. Yeah. And I was like, no, nah, like, it's it's weird like you're accusing me of this the police are involved now it's conflict of interest i'm not supposed to be here yeah it's criminal charges this is what they, they're basically saying and it's not one officer there's a few so now let's go back let's fast forward it this person's throat gets cut they're saying that it's me so they come they've taken me but that's not it they're not they, they haven't even ended there next thing i know the whole seg is being filled up with brothers. Vans are coming up from everywhere, taking groups of brothers, all healthcare, everything. All brothers are getting shipped out. Then they came back to me, um, another brother, let's just say Bash. We just mentioned mm. his name, Bash. I love that brother. Mm. You know, I love him, man. He suffered a lot. And I hope one day you have him on your podcast as well. Sure. No, seriously, very good brother, man. I love you. I love you, brother. You know who you are. So a few of us, they said that um, had a lot of influence within the prison estate and they classified me as one of them. Mm. So what they done was they, um, the first thing they done, they went to the home office. They put me as an A cat. Mm. They changed my category from the home office. They made me an A cat, which was mad quick. Like, it's like, how do you do this? There's, there's supposed to be a, there's supposed to be a process, process, everything, but it was so, all immediate. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna tell you why after. So I was made a I was made a cat. After this, they said, Oh, um, 
we are putting you through the process of the CSC estate. I'm thinking, what's that? I've never mm. heard of it. Close supervision center. So it's what you mentioned earlier, Charles Brunson. Yeah. yeah. The goal one in we're doing it. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're saying that your um, you are one of the ones that's been flagged up as one of the most influential. There's ten of you, mm. and you're causing too much of a problem within mm -hmm. the prison estate. <laughs> so I said, okay. So there was me. There was a couple of other brothers. Eventually, anyway, they done an assessment there because you go through an assessment process. They said that I fit the criteria because now they're using my pass. Mm -hmm. Saying, look, this man, I'm very manipulative and everything else as well. They used all these kind of key words. Mm -hmm. Then they sent me to um, Wood Hill mm -hmm. for further assessment. So then I went on to Wood Hill and it was absolutely like... How did you find Wood Hill? I'm going to tell you, like, when I first entered, so when, now that I'm a CSC prisoner, I was on a seven, I was on a seven man unlock, full PPE. So that means protective. With the dogs? Yeah, with the dog handler. I was double ratchet. So double handcuffed and handcuffed. Um, they were very, very hostile. But it was weird. The only way I can kind of describe it was, it felt like a graveyard. 